Uh, I think the Aquatic Centre is probably the most technically challenging uh, of projects to deliver on the Olympic Park and certainly the most technically challenging to deliver sustainability. And I think some fantastic work has been done. And you're going to be hear from the, hearing from those people who actually did it. Roof's up and then here now is the aerial shot, but we're starting in earnest now. We're working flat out underneath that roof, giving us a bit of protection, building the pools, the filtration areas, changing rooms, etc. down in, underneath. But you can see the constrained site. We've got um, railway lines here, riverways here, and uh, it really is big. And you can see the rest of the site, the logistics of controlling the rest of the site as, as we build this. But there you go, you know, within a year, year to go, uh, we achieved the goal, bang on program, this beautiful pool, and, um, and you, you know, you're now seeing it's in its full glory on, on test events uh, for diving and the swimmings next week. These seats need to come away. We need to reduce the venue back considerably, over 50% of its footprint after the Games, because that is the business case. That is the, the most sustainable part of this project. It's the most sustainable thing that London has been looking at, is that you do not leave a venue 17,500 seats, which nobody will use. Nobody needs it. In terms of what we've learned as a, in terms of the engineering, is the amount of emphasis and we've placed on analysis, and really good analysis that we can, we can get real design solutions from. Uh, concrete mixes are now our base specification. We did a lot of 3D working on this project, which reduced a lot of the complexity for us, a lot of more sharing of, of information. And then lastly, really understanding where the energy winds really are. We've learned a lot, I think. Um, we um, know that the best outcomes um, are attained just working together with the client design team and our supply chain and setting up uh, clear objectives and targets um, and make sure that our supply chain really understands the importance of what the project tries to achieve. So in terms of the key takeaway for industry, it's about making sustainability simple and the importance of being an informed client. Don't set the strategy and work, walk away. Set the strategy, have the technical support, the guidance, build the collaborative relationships, check that it's happening. And that way, hopefully, we can make progress in sustainability and deliver sustainable venues. How has this experience filtered into other projects in the office? I mean, of course, for us, because we do a lot of Fairface and we have done a lot of Fairface on other projects, to be able to do it with 50% less spent at a high degree of recycled aggregates was fantastic. That we actually, like Mike said, Arabs have taken that as their standard specification, so have Zaha's, basically. So we were looking to do that. And, um, and we've learned a lot from that process. And we've learned a lot from, obviously, the Brian process as well, basically. Government is now using projects like this to say contractors should be in the driving seat on design. Look at the velodrome is what we're hearing in the industry all the time. Much simpler, much lighter, much more economic, quicker to build and all the rest of it. Whereas uh, design done here and sustainability and contracting expertise added later has turned out to be extremely expensive. You know, what should be celebrated is that we've achieved a, a fantastic design. It's taken on board incredible sustainability uh, credits on it. It was delivered on time and on budget. And uh, it's been outside in the, in the absolute intense scrutiny of the media and the public eye. And there's hardly been any negative press at all uh, about it. And that, you know, that's a credit to everyone involved in this, in this, in this, um, and the project and the scheme. We like to point fingers. We like to um, accuse people of doing the wrong thing, which actually prevents people from standing up and saying, we've learnt as part of this process, we've learnt, we've developed, we're moving forward, we've changed. Uh, some of our ideas, some of our procurement processes. And I think we have to make sure that we develop an environment in which learning is possible and not sort of considered to be a failure. <laughs>